Welcome back to a true fan video. Read exclusive interviews and stories with your favorite mixed martial artists. My name is Nate Evans. In this episode, we're talking to UFC Hall of Famer Mark the Hammer Coleman, who talks about Japanese game shows, commercials, negotiating with pride, the Dakota fight, and more. In our first clip, Coleman talks about his old buddy, Gary Big Daddy Goodrich, who arm wrestled 2,000 contestants on a Japanese game show. Here he is talking about it. We put 2,000 Japanese people down in less than two hours, one after, one after another, one after another. And he told me, he said, uh, they saved some big guys for the very end. You know what I mean? And yeah. he said, when I, when I got to the very end, of course, I was, you know, pretty much, you know, getting tired, you know, getting tired. Then I had to, a couple of decent-sized guys, he said, but they had nothing for me. He put all, everybody down in, like, two Two hours, 2,000 guys. That's, them Japanese come up with some weird games, man. Coleman participated in the game show himself, where he had to forcefully pull the shorts off of a contestant trying to win $50,000. These guys put me in a game show. They go out in the streets of Japan, and they find three different guys. Uh, you know, one guy was a garbage man. Uh, one guy did this, and one guy did this. And they go up to him with uh, the, the host of the show, goes up to him and says, hey, da-da-da-da-da. And I'm not with them. I'm, I, I, they, I just come in to do – but they, they say to the guy, they say, oh, uh, uh, if the guy gets excited about the money, they said, oh, all you have to do is fight this man. And then they show a picture of like, me. And then he's like, oh, huh. uh, well, the guy says, okay, I'll try. But they get three guys. We get to, you know, I got five minutes, and I got to rip the pat. I got the first two guys had a patch on their ass, Velcro patch on their ass, and I had to run over. I had to get that patch off their ass as fast as I could. And, uh, well, the first two guys I had to patch off in, like, 30 seconds. So I got four minutes and 30 seconds for this third guy. And because the promoters told me, please, Coleman, we do not want to have to pay these guys because our show is – just starting and we got a budget so we don't want to have to give these guys fifty thousand dollars you know what i mean i said yeah okay but they changed the rules they already had two or three shows and the third guy had a pair of shorts on he had two pair of tight shorts on uh and i had to go take the one pair off i had to get it off his legs and off his feet so i'm thinking that's not going to be that easy is it right no (laughs) this is unbelievable well well, the, the, exactly. The, the first, the first three shows they had, the guy was not allowed to grab his pants, right? But so the first three guys that they, the first three shows, they won easy. The, the, the fighter or the baseball player or whoever star they brought in there, he got the, he got the pair of pants off the guy rather easily. So they decided to change the rule, and they said. This guy can grab his shorts, Coleman. And I said, hold on, hold on. You know, this is not going to be easy. A guy that can hold on to his shorts and you got to take them off the bottom of his feet, right? It's not easy, correct? Sure. It's not oh. easy. Yeah, he could, absolutely. Well, so I went out there and I played around with him because I had 430 left. I let him grab my leg and I was baiting the crowd a little bit. They were loving it. Then all of a sudden I said, well, I better get serious now. We're down in about three minutes. I got to make sure I get these babies off. I threw them down to the ground and I started ripping these fucking shorts off. And uh, he's holding on for dear life. And I'm not getting so far, right? You know what I mean? I'm getting one side down to the knee, but he's just holding on to the other side. Then when I go up for the other side, he would just grab the other side. Keep pulling them up. You know what I mean? Pulling them up, pulling them up. You're just saying, this is crazy, but this is Japan. I'm out there out of shape in between fights, and this motherfucker was holding on for 50 grand to his pants. And so anyways, I just ripped so hard, I just ripped them right off. They ripped right in half. And I and they looked at me and said, nope. And they brought out another pair of shorts to put back on him. I'm getting so frustrated. I'm getting so fucking frustrated because I'm so tired. And uh, I cannot get these fucking shorts down, you know what I mean? Because he just keeps grabbing and pulling. And so I said, fuck it. You know, I heard the crowd chanting this guy's name, man. They were chanting his fucking name. And uh, 
I said, I got to turn it up a little bit. I got to get a little bit dirty here. So I, I had to start getting a little physical with him and, and really put the heat on him and try to fucking, you know. And finally, sure enough, I got them fuckers down to his knees, and I'm fucking getting there. I got one of one side of his pants down to his ankle, and I got the other one down to his ankle now, but he's still holding on. He's still got his legs crossed, and I'm like, motherfucker, and I, you know, boom. I took him off with about 20 seconds left, I swear to God. I held these fuckers up in the air, and I'm like, ah, I felt so great because I couldn't wait to go get the sushi that these guys are going to take me to get now. I'm going to eat fucking $5,000 worth of sushi right now tonight. (laughs) Good, (laughs) real good, fresh sushi. Fresh wasabi, and yes, because it was one of the hardest fucking challenges of my life. It was so fucking hard. I was so, my arms and forearms were just done. They were toast. And I was tired, and it was so competitive, and then sure enough, I watched the game show. It's hilarious, man. I got to somehow find footage of it and uh, post it, so people will say, what the fuck? What kind of game show is this? Coleman also took part in making commercials in Japan. In this clip, he talks about a dull banana commercial he made, where he had to dress up in a ridiculous costume. I did a Dole Banana commercial, which was uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. The, you can find pictures of that all over. I mean, they're they're hard to come by, but you can find pictures of me sitting on like a six, uh, a seven foot banana with with this. I had this costume on. They had they had a king's crown. Uh, I had my my shoes. My shoes were yellow, and they curled up in the air like a banana. And it looked. And then I had these. Uh, these pants that only came down to my knees, and they were pink, red, purple, stripe. It was just really, really. Then I had a, um, they turned me into the king. I was the king of Banana Land. So I had all this king's costume on, and uh, uh, I had to sit there, and um, I had to hold these two bananas. It was Dole Banana. They were doing a new, they had a, they had a, they had a special banana. It was bigger. It was more yellow. It had more nutrients in it, and it was more sweet. So, sweetie Obama, Uma, sweetie Obama. I'm telling my people, I'm the king of banana land, so I'm up there in this costume holding these bananas up, and I got to scream out, Bana Uma, Bana Uma, sweetie Obama, Uma. And then I had to open a banana take a bite of it, and I had to do about seven or eight different endings to it. One time I would slip on a banana peel, a lot of editing and this and that, but it was so, it was so cool. I got paid 20 fucking grand. I got my mom and dad first class business trip over to Japan for seven days. I got them a vacation paid for, and I shot this commercial. Coleman had a legendary career in Pride, which we'll talk more about in a minute. But first, he shares a story about negotiating with the organization over a fight that he didn't really want anything to do with at the time. Here he is talking about it. And then all of a sudden, Pride calls me and says, will you fight Crow Cop? I said, hell no. You know, I hardly, I never said no to a fight, but this is one of the first fights I can remember saying no. I said, I'm not fighting Crow Cop in three weeks. Are you serious? They're like, oh, Coleman, come on, we need you. We need you to fight this guy. Uh, we have nobody else. It's uh, somebody got hurt. Nope, nope, nope. I'm not fucking. I'm not getting my my neck fucking. You know, my neck was jacked at the time. It was either just before surgery or just after surgery. Either way, it was still a scary, scary thought fighting Crow Cop, the, the savage killer that I admit that he is, I would love to fight him with a full tank of gas. I think I beat him with a full tank of gas, but I know coming over there with three weeks is nothing. So then they offer me a little more money, and I say no. Still, I say no, but I wanted to say yes, but I said no. And then they offer me a little bit more money, and I say no, but I say it a lot more quietly. And then they say, this is the last offer, Coleman. Take it or leave it. And then I sell myself to the devil. And I take it knowing good and well I'm in big fucking trouble. One of Coleman's most infamous negotiations 
came before his first fight in Pride against Nobuhiko Takada. There was rumor and speculation that Coleman got paid to take a dive in what people called a fixed fight. Here's Coleman talking about it. I thought they were offering me a, 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 a real fight, $300,000, and it was 30,000, it was 300,000 yen, which was $30,000. I said, what the fuck? No, man, I'm not, I'm not doing it for that. But then they went up high enough where I just said, fuck it. You know, I said, you guys got to promise me another fight after it because I'm not done fighting. Coleman was in a difficult situation because after becoming UFC champion, he was released by the organization after back-to-back -back losses. And the next thing you know, I went from the champion to the fucking chump. And, uh, yeah, my mind was, uh, you know, what am I going to do now? You know, what the hell am I going to do after the Hizzle fight? And then, luckily, Pride picked me up. They brought me into their organization, and uh, I took advantage of what they offered. Coleman was invited to participate in the Pride 2000 Open Weight Grand Prix. This tournament featured some of the top fighters in the world at the time, including Hoist Gracie, Kazushi Sakuraba, Igor Bob Chanchin, and more. Coleman went on to win the tournament and regain his spot as the number one ranked heavyweight fighter in the world. There it was. Mark Coleman was back. I was the world champion a couple years earlier. It was taken away from me. And when I won the Pride Grand Prix, um, people were giving me the number one ranked status. So basically, yes, I I won the world titles in the UFC and then the Pride Grand Prix. I considered that for the world title. I was considered a world champion at the time once again. And wow, yes, that was, that was amazing and overwhelming. Coleman has taken criticism over the years for what happened in the fight with Takata. However, it's important to consider the circumstances before casting judgment. It appears he took a gamble on his future, a gamble that ultimately paid off for the Hall of Fame fighter. That'll do it for this episode of MMA True Fan Video. You can find the entire MMA True Fan episode on Mark Coleman on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and all major podcast apps. You can also find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at MMA True Fan. If you'd like to purchase a shirt like this on black or on white, please email us at MMA at gmail.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.